Hi, this is Pedia Bergzer Arcade at bergzerarcade.com, and this is tutorial number, I believe it's 98. And it, this one here is basically just the part two of the last tutorial since we ran out of time. So let's go ahead and open up Unity, and we'll also open up Mono Develop. And let's go ahead and start adding some code that'll actually pull us down to the ground. So down here in our else block is where I'm going to be putting that code. And I'm just going to leave a line after the debug. Now what I'm going to want to do is check to see if we have any collision flags. And the one that I'm really interested in is Collide Below. Now if you go look up collision flags on uh, the Unity scripting reference, you can get a list of all of them. But basically the one that we want is Collide Below. So we're going to make a, a comparison with them. So we're going to say if, and then our collision flags. So we're saying if we have a collision flag and a single ampersand and we're going to also be looking for a collision flag if I can spell it collision flags dot collisional below and let's we'll take a second look at them all there's above below collide above collide below collide sides uh, none and sides we want collide below and you'll see why when we move in. And we want to check to see if it's equal to zero. And if it is, we want to do something. So we'll fill this in in a bit. What I'm going to do next is come down right above our collision flags. And I'm going to add basically a fake gravity to us. So we'll come up here and make another variable for it. And I'll make it public, of course. And it'll be of type float not goat and well, I'll just call it gravity and let's just start off at 20 and the setting for gravity and down here just above our controller dot move I'm basically going to apply this fake gravity to us so I'm going to take our move direction and I want to take its Y property, which is basically up and down. And I want to subtract from it our gravity. But I want to multiply it by time dot delta time. So that I get a basically a smooth falling. So let's save that off. We'll go right back into Unity. Hit start and boom fall like a rock and we're moving way too quick so let's go ahead and here where we're moving our character let's adjust this let's make it move uh, time dot delta time so it'll be a little bit smoother for us and of course we hit play we fall to the ground and we move around now I haven't added the rotation in yet or running but as you notice it looks fairly familiar to what we had before and probably a few lines less of code so for rotating our character uh, let's just use the exact same code we used before since it didn't involve using our moving the controller around so I'm just going to go back into our old script. I'll cut and paste it. And I'm going to put it right above the check to see if we're grounded. I'm going to get rid of the debug statement because I don't need it. We know that works. And just quickly make sure that everything there logically makes sense. And I'm going to change the way this looks. Well, change the way it works too. Uh, just to make it something different than we did last time. So instead of checking to see the if the axis or the absolute value of the axis is uh, greater than zero, we're just going to see if they're pushing the button. So if they're pushing the rotate button, or either one of them, uh, then we're just going to rotate. And uh, it should be the same name for our variable. Yes, rotate speed. All right, so that should actually just be fine. Uh, let's just quickly go check it. So there we go. We drop like a rock and we can rotate. Great. We 
Let's go back into Model Develop. Now, let's go ahead and add our fall animation to this. And the way I want it to work is if we're falling for a set amount of time, uh, then start playing our fall animation. So I'm going to go up to the top here. I'm going to set, uh, we'll just make it public. And it'll be of type float. And I'm just going to call it airtime. And what this is going to mean is basically how long uh, are we in the air? How long have we been in the air since the last time we touched the ground? And I'll scroll down to our update. And then in my is grounded part, uh, right after the debug, I'm going to set this to equal zero because, well, we're on the ground. And then I'm also going to come down here to where we're checking the collision flags. And if it's in this block, then that means that we're actually in the air. So what I'm going to do is add some time to it. And the time I want to add is the time dot delta time. So the time between the last frame. And then I'm going to check to see if our air time is greater than a value that we're going to set for you know, how long we have to be in the air before it's considered a fall. And I'm going to make that, well, I guess we'll just do it on the private or public. And I'll call this fall time. And I'm just going to set it to if we're falling for at least a half a second it'll be declared as actually falling. So the length of time we have to be falling before the system knows it's a fall. Uh, the character collider as it goes along the ground, it will kind of bounce. It'll go below and get pushed up, then go below and get pushed up. That's why we're creating variables to check to see how long we're in the air. And if we're in the air for more than half a second, it's not just a matter of the, the terrain collider or whatever mesh collider you have pushing our capsule collider up into the air and letting it fall again. So we're going to come down here and we called it fall time. So if it is greater than, then we'll, we'll just call some function called fall. And I said fall. <laughs> And let's just go quickly make that function. Uh, we'll make it public. It doesn't return anything, and it's just called fall. Now eventually, we may want to pass variables into it, but for now, we don't want to. And then we're going to use animation crossfade. And the animation name that we want to crossfade, I know mine is called fall. And since we have one that we're crossfading to down here, let's also go up into our start method. And the very last line, we're actually going to start our own, we'll tell it what animation to start with. And we can just do that by saying animation dot play. And the animation we want to start with, which will be idle. So we'll go back into Unity. Uh, there's no error, so we'll start it up, and we should have a fall animation. There we go. Now, we don't have anything set to when we're not falling, so it's it's just going to stay like that, and that's fine. We have that animation set now. So we'll go back into Mono Develop, and we'll go ahead and set up the rest of these functions that we're going to use to just basically play animations or set any properties that need to be set for an animation. So I'll just start at the top. Public. None of them are going to return anything. The first one, I'll just call it idle. And the line of code is actually the same, uh, except for the animation it's going to call. So I'm just going to cut and paste. Uh, the next one will be walk. And we'll make sure to change the name up there. We want run. Uh, 
and make sure we get the animation. Uh, we're also going to want jump. We'll implement jump now. And I know my animation for jump is just called jump. And we also have uh, the strafing keys. So we're going to want to put that one in too. And that one's called side for me. Okay, so we have all the calls to the animations in. And it looks like we're coming up on 11 minutes already in this video. So it looks like tonight's going to be a three-parter or more. So I'll just save this off and start on the next one. I'll see you at the next tutorial. Bye-bye.